And they even do things like fMRI scans where real time they're looking at the physiology in the brain sort of light up and they can't find these differences. And so there's, there's no like normal versus abnormal serotonin level that maps onto these diagnostic categories like major depressive disorder and someone who doesn't have a psychiatric condition. It's objectively, they cannot differentiate them with a blood test or a brain scan or anything like that, which is why when you see a psychiatrist or any mental health or any doctor for that matter, you never do a blood test to, to confirm the diagnosis because there is no way to t- sort of use that to tease out these populations. Now, the nuance here, Tim, is that just because we haven't found that depression is caused by serotonin, of low serotonin, it does not mean that there isn't a genetic component to it. There is clearly a genetic component Mm -hmm. to it. We've all seen it growing up. Some people are nervous Nellies. um, They're more anxious. They're kind of skewed in that way. They're more kind of neurotic. They're more likely to become depressed. Um, it's just that that's just not due to low serotonin. This is likely polygenic. It's, it's due to multiple different genes. Um, and I think it's kind of wrong, honestly, to cause, to call this like a diseased state. I think about it just like a bell curve. Like we have a bell curve of different types of human, uh, personalities, right? You, we have like more extroverted people and then we have more anxious and reserved folks. Are we going to say the anxious and reserved folks have a brain illness or a brain disease? That this just seems like normal human variation to me. Mm. And the last, yeah, the last Good thing point. I'll say on that is, you know, maybe there is something, you know, and we eventually find it, and there is some kind of combination of multiple genes that just makes people unhappy. Um, but the truth is, we haven't found that yet. Um, and so, while I believe that could be the case, and you know, maybe I will eventually come across. Um, a group of patients and I look at their lives and they have no health problems, diet problems, no life issues, and they're still terribly depressed. I'm willing to make space for that. But what I, what I want people to think of is like, like that's like the 1% and the, and the 99% is just like anxious, you know, people and people with difficult lives. And my understand, my, my guess is that your audience of students have probably been, you know, just like me whipped up into this state of thinking, Oh, these are serious medical conditions. Oh, it's clinical depression. You know, all of this kind of this language and this jargon that builds it up as this biological thing is biological error, but but it's really not. And so, and so that's that's my spiel on anxiety and depression. 